Monday became much more. It was Monday morning, and nothing very much was happening. Rhubarb, who preferred evenings anyway, thought this particular Monday morning was being rather more difficult than it ought to be. It had been raining hard for hours, which set Rhubarb mumbling and grumbling to himself. Why is it that Monday rain is so much wetter than all the other kinds of rain, and even wetter than the water in the lake at the bottom of the garden? Then the thought struck him that it was no longer a nothing very much Monday morning, but it was becoming a much more sort of Monday morning. The rain-soaked birds were being much more noisy with their twittering and squeaking, giving Rhubarb a double headache. Custard, who was sheltering in Rhubarb's house, was much more frantic with his pacing up and down, twice as fast as he thought he could. Rhubarb, whose bones were all buried somewhere out there in the garden, complained of much more emptiness in his stomach. Thank goodness there's not much more of Monday morning left, he said. In the afternoon, the sun came out, and with it the usual pace of life returned. Rhubarb began to feel less out of sorts with himself, having had a late lunch of muddy marrowbone jelly. Then he sat back to reflect. Ah, I have an idea to rid my life of miserable Monday mornings, or miserable any day mornings for that matter, he said. I should always try to have something to look forward to. It would take my mind off things. And with that he began to anticipate the evening ahead. Evening is the time when calm usually descends on his life. It did occur to him that calm was not a particularly exciting thing to look forward to, but it was all he had, so forward he looked. Evening came. It was fine and warm, and Rhubarb, who had just finished Tiffin, looked out at the garden animals lounging about reading comics, and reflected on some stories he'd once heard of the grand old days. Ah, romance, fine summer evenings, scented with honeysuckle and filled with the sounds of the music of the waltz. <clears throat> Gone forever, sighed Rhubarb. Good evening, said a voice, startling Rhubarb, who was still drifting about in his world of scents and music. Raymond Foxtrot Smythe, said the owner of the voice, introducing himself. A rhubarb, said Rhubarb in reply. Custard stopped reading and peeped over his comic in a casual sort of way. I'm here to look for dancing couples, said Raymond. There'll be a grand ball on Saturday, and the finest dancers will win a fishing holiday. With this last remark, Custard's ears pricked up, his eyes whirled round, and he tangoed towards the fox. Uh, good evening, sir, said Custard in a crawly sort of way. Did I hear you say fishing holiday? Indeed you did, sir, said the fox. Oh, I see. Oh, uh, fish. Oh, awful things. No, no, I'm not interested, said Custard, and he disappeared over the fence. The fox thanked Rhubarb for his interest in the big event and said he hoped to meet him again at the ball. Ahem, said Custard, ahemming over the fence. I'm not really interested in the ball myself, but I could show you a dance routine that's bound to win. Custard spent all the next morning teaching Rhubarb the new dance, and when Rhubarb had finally mastered the difficult steps, it looked the most graceless, lumbering dance ever. However, Rhubarb, who was convinced he'd win, thanked Custard heartily and dashed off to ask Poodle Princess if she'd accompany him to the grand ball. Meanwhile, back in the alley, the sneaky Custard was slipping off to see his girlfriend, Moggy Malone. Well, Moggy, me dear, the fishing holiday is as good as ours, smirked Custard. That rhubarb doesn't stand a chance with a dance like that. When the night of the grand ball finally arrived, all the animals gathered up at the clearing on Fox's Dale. The moon shone extra brightly, illuminating the whole scene so that everyone could see. It was a lovely evening. Each dance team was given a number, and when it was their turn, Raymond Foxtrot Smythe called them to the floor team by team. Custard and Moggy Malone stole the very hearts of the judges as they whirled about the floor as though on a cloud. Everyone clapped and cheered when they finished. A number 25, called Raymond. It was Rhubarb's and Princess's turn to step onto the dance floor. They took a bow and began their strange clackety dance with jerks and wobbles. Custard nudged Moggy and winked. He just knew they'd won, but after a few of Rhubarb's steps, the audience began to like the strange dance, and everyone started to join in. What fun it was, 
and what much more fun it was when Raymond awarded 47 points to Rhubarb and Princess. Blighters, cringed Custard and went green with envy. Rhubarb was in the pink, Moggy Malone stormed out, and Princess graciously accepted the winning tickets. I thought there was something fishy about the whole thing, she said, and everyone danced until dawn.